Almost 55% of voters think Trump's candidacy is a publicity stunt. In fact, just after his announcement, he demanded to see Jeb Bush's birth certificate. This will be the finest, most luxurious, gold-plated, diamond-encrusted campaign. Well, that would suggest that you don't think he's even going to, like, make it to... I don't think he's going to be on the ballot by February 1. Could he actually win? No freaking way! <laughs> no, he, he will not be president. He will not be the nominee. He'll go through a few primaries, I think. This man has got some uh, momentum, and uh, we better be ready for the fact that he might be leading the Republican ticket next. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't believe that, but I want to go on. <laughs> what once uh, might have seemed like a joke is suddenly no laughing matter. I recall he was going to be out of the race by now, um, but now tonight we're in Trump country. <laughs> I mean, he was a cartoon character, uh, really, in my mind. I, you know, all I knew about him was that he was this sort of larger-than-life personality who, you know, would fire people on live TV, and, uh, you know, you'd see his name on the Manhattan skyline. I candidly do like watching his TV show. Um, I actually would prefer it if he would get back to doing The Apprentice and less of the running for president thing. I mean, I certainly wasn't taking him seriously as a political force. You know, as, as late as a year ago, I was saying there was no chance he could win. Brilliant in a kind of... Uh, savant-like way at getting the attention of the press and it served him well in his marketing businesses and all the rest and so I assumed it was all part of that I never really thought he was seriously going to run for anything you would hear rumblings about Trump and you know Roger Stone would occasionally float a rumor Trump was gonna run for president but it was always part of the Trump brand and the Trump marketing it was basically it wasn't until the moment he came down that escalator at Trump Tower that it dawned on me oh my God, he's actually gonna do this. And, and I will be the first to admit, I thought it wasn't gonna go very far for, for quite a long time, and I, I was wrong. Hand down your head now, what have you done? Hand down your head and cry. Hand down your head now, what have you done? It's time to say goodbye. Hand down your head now, what have you done? It was fall 2008. He wants to, quote, spread the wealth around, my friends. He's not fighting for Joe the plumber. He's fighting for Joe the hedge fund manager. Put your hands up. The election was in full swing. The Iraq war, Afghanistan, taxes, spending. These were the concerns of Americans across the nation. Maybe he would oppose the surge. I will restore our strength by ending this war. Completely. But a bomb was about to go off. The closing numbers on the markets today, at one point the market fell as if down a well over 700 points. Talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're now down 43 percent. The worst economic recession since the Great Depression had begun. Could force one million homeowners from their properties in 09. The candidates pivoted to the unprecedented economic anxiety gripping the public and we are running out of time. President George W. Bush worked with the Congress and passed the largest bailout of private industry in U.S. history, TARP. First, the federal government will use a portion of the $700 billion financial rescue plan to inject capital into banks by purchasing equity shares. I've abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. Almost a trillion dollars was spent to bail out the industry that many saw as responsible for the economic collapse. With Republicans holding Congress for most of the decade and a Republican president in office, the die had been cast. Republicans were responsible for the problems. Barack Obama won in a landslide victory. Barack Obama is projected to be the next president of the United States of America. And while most Americans went about their business as the election season came to a close, many conservatives felt betrayed by the party that they thought represented them. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations. By 2009, the betrayal would become action in the form of a populist movement that became known as the Tea Party. Wanna... We're thinking of having a Chicago Tea Party in July. <laughs> All you capitalists that want to show up to Lake Michigan, I'm going to start organizing. <laughs>
It was the first essentially libertarian populist movement in American history. Normally, populists run to Washington and they say, give us everything, give us more, more government, bigger government. The Tea Partiers were a populist movement that said, let's have less government, let's send it back to the states. I thought that maybe they were gonna fulfill that ancient libertarian prophecy of storming Washington, taking it over, and then leaving everybody alone. Republicans were the Tea Party's first target. Don't ever underestimate the power of we the people. The establishment, a word associated with everything that had gone wrong in the Republican Party, a party which had allowed more spending on its watch than any previous Congress and president in the history of the United States. Following a trillion dollar stimulus, President Obama works to pass his signature item, health care reform. Disenchanted Republicans and conservatives under the banner of the Tea Party disrupt town halls and assemble protests in the Capitol. Charges of racism are leveled at the protesters. That is nothing but a bunch of tea-banging rednecks. Angry government and, uh, and, and racism. And the conservative movement has now crystallized into the white power movement. Who are Ill into killing blacks and Jews and women or whatever it may be. I haven't met any racists yet, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, not in the Tea Party. Conservatives and Tea Party protesters show their first electoral strength by creating a nationwide push to elect a Republican in the liberal stronghold of Massachusetts. Scott Brown becomes the junior senator from Massachusetts, replacing long-standing lion of the Democrats, Ted Kennedy. His sole mission, stopping the passage of Obamacare. For more than a year now, we have seen a bitter, destructive, and endless drive to completely transform America's health care system. March 2010, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, passes over the objections of Republicans. Action becomes outrage. Conservative media and radio lead the charge to unseat the Republican establishment and replace them with conservatives that will stand for party principles. This is a repudiation also of old Republican guard policy. They don't want to see a repeat of what has been going on the past eight years. They don't want to see that type of Republican. The House changes hands and the Tea Party movement's outrage becomes determination to undo the damage. The Republicans have taken control of, uh, of, of Congress, or at least the House of Representatives, but I'm not sure if it's the Republicans or the Tea Party has taken control. Prevent tax hikes, reverse Obamacare, hold the line. CPAC 2011. Billionaire Donald Trump is invited to the Conservative Political Action Conference as a guest of the gay Republican activist group GoProud. So, you know, I remember going down to CPAC and other people who were involved with GoProud were very excited about having him there, were encouraging him to run for president. My take on him then was this was a guy who, who was a character in, in the story of New York rather than a player. And, and he's sort of a background actor in a lot of ways because I would talk to people who were actual real estate developers or actual bankers or investment folks or hedge fund guys. And every one of them treated Donald Trump with absolute contempt. Many saw the speech as uneventful. You know, it was just uh, it was just sort of a distraction, a funny little thing that you could write up a, a splashy blog post about when you were at CPAC. But by April 2011, Donald Trump has positioned himself as the front-running potential candidate for the upcoming Republican primaries, a primary that Tea Party activists saw as an opportunity to turn the tide for conservatism. But Trump's avenue to this front runner status is to embrace what had become the symbol of Republican racism to the media, birtherism. I mean, I, I started taking him more seriously when his birther conspiracy theories started actually not getting some play in conservative media. At the time, that was totally anathema to what the message that we were trying to portray. Uh, we were trying to distance ourselves from you know, this, this uh, quasi-racist conspiracy theory craziness. And, you know, we assumed it was a very fringe view at the time. Birthers believed Barack Obama was not an American citizen and was thus ineligible to be president of the United States. Among the outraged throngs of Tea Party protesters, these were by far the most intensely unhinged and active, seizing on their anger with a system that they believed was rigged against them. Trump becomes the tip of the spear for the birther movement, making multiple public demands to see President Obama's long-form birth certificate and brushing off any implication that the request is racially motivated. On April 27, 2011, President Obama produces his birth certificate. To the astonishment of the press, Trump declares victory. 
Today, I'm very proud of myself because I've accomplished something that nobody else has been able to accomplish. Our president has finally released a birth certificate. Donald Trump. When Trump attends the correspondence dinner a few weeks later, he seems to be under the impression he has been invited as an equal. Instead, he becomes the butt of jokes for the duration of the evening. But no one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? <laughs> what really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? Many define his demeanor in the face of these jokes as angry. On May 16th, 2011, Trump announces he will not seek the Republican nomination for president. I will not be running for president as much as I'd like to. But when Mitt Romney becomes the Republican presidential nominee, the Tea Party, now a well-established force in the Republican Party, are asked to overcome their objections to his more liberal record. Having established himself as an influential figure among certain elements of the Republican base, Romney seeks and receives the endorsement of Donald Trump. I was absolutely baffled by the Romney decision. I really did not understand it. And, you know, I see now that maybe he um, had some insight that, that we don't, or, you know, his advisors did and recognized this sort of latent um, political uh, force that, you know, had, is, has now burst onto the scene. Obama goes on to decisively win re-election. Many in the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party feel the system was rigged against them. The death of the Tea Party seems imminent as many put down the signs and go home. But there was one winner. Donald Trump, now having established himself as a Republican power player, continues to give speeches at political conferences and endorse candidates. Rumblings that he will run for president in 2016 never go away. After years of being treated as a joke, not only by his business peers, but among political figures as well, Trump seems to have found his audience. Outraged, disenchanted conservatives, tired of being called racist, unhappy with the Republican Party, despising the Democrats, ready for change. It is early 2013. Breitbart News, having been a website most famous for its eccentric media mogul namesake, Andrew Breitbart, has seen massive changes in the year since his death. No longer focusing primarily on corruption and media bias, Steve Bannon directs the website into waters usually reserved for Washington newspapers. Breitbart News begins to shift its focus towards the inner workings and inside baseball of the Washington power moves and minutia of the Congress. Bannon sees the website as a weapon, an opportunity to disrupt the Republican establishment. Puff pieces about former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin as well as defense pieces about Donald Trump, litter the website. The Drudge Report, who in previous elections had been viewed as an indispensable part of the conservative media, helped drive traffic to Breitbart, along with other conservative media websites that dabbled in the emerging and ever-growing outrage class of the Republican base, such as Infowars and Gateway Pundit. Over the next several years, the conservative media begins to splinter behind the scenes. Conservative radio hosts like Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity find themselves more often quoting Breitbart News than mainstays like National Review. We originally had this sort of legitimate critique of this of the liberal media infrastructure, um, and we just wanted to have conservatism get a fair hearing. We wanted it to be a factual argument because we felt as conservatives we would win that factual argument. Well, so Fox News grew up, and Rush Limbaugh, and Sean Hannity, and Mark Levin, and Breitbart, and, and a variety of other folks sort of emerged out of the late 90s, 2000s window, and they became successful media outlets. One of the biggest problems that the conservative movement has, and something that we're really gonna have to reckon with when this is all over, is you can make a pretty good living in this business only talking to audiences that already agree with you. Lots of right-wing talk radio people made it sound like it was so easy to fix all of the problems, to stop Barack Obama, to get everything right in the world. 
And they were wrong. And they exploited and they misinformed a lot of their readers, their readers or listeners. They didn't just stick with, we're gonna be a counterweight to distorted liberal information. They decided they would run out to the fringes themselves because it wasn't enough now to have a true narrative. You had to have your narrative. The relationship between Trump and the outrage wing of conservative media becomes so solidified that rumors of a financial relationship become well-known secrets. They cited top Breitbart management that they were allowing Trump to turn it into, as they put it in this piece, his own fan website. And so you ended up with people who became convinced that Barack Obama was a Muslim terrorist who had been born in Kenya. You had people that became convinced that Bill Clinton has killed 50 people with his bare hands. You had people convinced that the, the NAFTA superhighway was going to bring in 50 billion Mexicans to kill people. By 2015, most pundits in conservatism simply don't buy that Trump will run for president. On June 16th, 2015, Trump proves them all wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you today a man who I have loved and respected my entire life, my father, Donald J. Trump. That is some group of people, thousands. So nice, thank you very much. That's really nice, thank you. The splinters in conservative media begin to become more public. National Review, The Weekly Standard, and others are deemed establishment magazines. By August, Trump is leading most Republican polls with most experts still agreeing that he doesn't have any shot at the nomination. One by one, the candidates fall to the power that Trump wields with the base. A base which is increasingly, undeniably populated, with people more in line with a caricature of the paranoid xenophobe than what Trump's conservative opposition might have wished. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Because we need to take our country back. We are tired of people giving it away to foreign nationals, to foreign countries going to protect our border by building a wall. He's sending the illegal immigrants back. And you're in the wrong country, brother. You really are. Build a wall. Save America. Well, we're going to build the wall. Donald Trump for president because he cares about this country and he will build a wall. So high no one can climb over it, too. Trump is enraging many people with his remarks about Mexican immigrants. Are you concerned about alienating the Hispanic vote by saying that Mexico is not our friend and we're building a wall? He called people who were coming from Mexico rapists and murders. Words matter. Yes, he words matter. And Donald Trump is all not call over the time. Go back to Mexico! Third generation American. Build the wall! You prove it to us that you are not a peaceful people! As 2015 comes to a close, Trump's status as the frontrunner continues, and some within conservative media begin questioning how far they will go to oppose his nomination. Never Trump is born. The Republican Party has chosen to embrace Donald Trump. That's their prerogative. But this is where I get off the boat. This is a guy who is conning conservatives right now. As you probably know, I think Donald Trump's a turd tornado. But his message is being a loud-mouthed dick. So that's what Donald Trump is. He's a maniac. Says, well, there goes my time as a Republican. I just call him Republicans against Trump, or rat for short. They will come over, George, as soon as they uh, get in line. He's been atop the real clear politics average of national polls for three months straight. Oopsie doopsie. The Republican Party is in an utter panic over what is happening with Donald Trump. In other words, the fact that Donald Trump continues to lead national polls. On the Republican side, Donald Trump will win West Virginia. Florida Senator Marco Rubio out of the race. Now Washington State for Donald Trump. Could argue that momentum is on Trump's side. Donald Trump will win South Carolina's Republican presidential primary. Right now, what's he winning by? 20 points. 20 points. And we are officially now looking at the most dramatic political cliffhanger in the last 40 years. There is no path for Ted Cruz. Donald Trump will beat Texas Senator Ted Cruz. With all of his foes vanquished, Donald Trump emerges as the presumptive nominee at the announcement that his single remaining opponent, Ted Cruz, will leave the race. 
We are suspending our campaign. Mr. Trump, congratulations on the win last night. It looks like you won every county, every congressional district. That is a crushing victory. The real Donald uh, will be presumptive GOP nominee. We all need to unite and focus on defeating Hillary. Claims the mantle of presumptive Republican nominee. Claiming that he does not actually have to bring the Republican Party together in order to win the White House. I don't think it matters, but it would be nice to have the Republican Party come together. With that being said, I think I'll win anyway. In this country tonight, everyone who'd feared even the idea of Donald Trump as presidential nominee has to get their head around this and ask themselves, now what? Between May and July, the Republican Party is in a panic with the looming prospect of his nomination at the July convention. Free the Delegates is launched as an attempt to usurp the plans of Team Trump by allowing delegates, many of whom had expressed they did not wish to vote for Trump, to be unbound from any particular candidate allowing them to vote their conscience. Tom John, the chairman of Indiana's 7th Congressional District and a potential at-large delegate to the Republican National Convention. John told Politico that Trump, quote, doesn't represent what I want my party to represent. After that, he received multiple threatening emails. One reading, Tom, hope the family is well. Your name and info has been given to me on a list that is about to go public. Good luck becoming a delegate. We are watching you. We will disclose the hotels and the room numbers of those delegates who are directly involved in the steal. We'll tell you who the culprits are. We urge you to visit their hotel and find them. If you disenfranchise those people and you say, well, I'm sorry, but you're 100 votes short, I think you would have problems like you've never seen before. Well, I think I think, it would, I think bad things would happen. I really do. I believe that. I wouldn't lead it, but I think bad things would happen. I think you'd have riots. I think you'd have riots. How's this for unity, folks? Yes. Party unity. Party of the delegates from 11 states have submitted written petitions asking for a roll call vote on the roll. Roll call vote! 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 Roll call vote. All those in favor say aye. Suppose no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the resolution is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. Free the delegates is defeated. Trump takes the stage in Cleveland, giving a speech that is called by leading libertarian magazine, Reason, a terrifying display of nightmarish authoritarianism. A country of generosity and warmth, but we will also be a country of law and order. We cannot afford to be so politically correct anymore. There can be no prosperity without law and order. Nobody knows the system better than me. I alone can fix it. I will restore law and order to our country. I am the law and order candidate. We are going to build a great border wall. The laws of the United States are enforced, and I am not going to let companies move to other countries. Friends, delegates, and fellow Americans, I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. After the convention, Trump goes back to attacking the Republican Party establishment for not being supportive enough. Angry that Senator Ted Cruz did not name him in his convention speech, Trump continues to support the conspiracy theory that Cruz's father was involved in the 1963 assassination of President John F. Kennedy. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald's being 
uh, you know, shot him. They never denied. Did anybody ever deny that it was the father? They're not saying, oh, that wasn't really my father. It's a little hard to do because it looks like him. Fueling the conspiracy-driven direction Trump keeps pulling the campaign is what many refer to as the alt-right, a nationalist movement, often racist in nature, that feeds the conspiracy fires that helped propel Trump to the front of the primaries. It's been associated with racist movements, white supremacist movements. And what we found, much to the surprise of conservatives like myself, is there's a large audience for this type of uh, rhetoric, these types of ideas. There are a lot of people who had never heard of this thing called the alt-right, or the white nationalist right, or however you want to call it, the identitarian right, until Donald Trump came along. And frankly, I had not heard the phrase alt-right until Donald Trump came along. And so you have all of these criticisms of the mainstream conservatism represented by William F. Buckley and Ronald Reagan. All these critics now feel empowered with the rise of Donald Trump. The mainstream right, the, if you want to, the elite right, however you want to put it, um, has said the stuff they're advocating for, the racist stuff that they're advocating for, is unacceptable and has no place in sort of decent politics. And those guys are pissed about it. And because they're pissed about it, they want to get rid of us, right? That's why they call themselves the alt-right, is they want to be the alternative right. They want to replace the existing right in American politics and replace it with their version of politics. Anyone who had a bone to pick with the George W. Bush administration, with the Republicans in Congress, with the editors of National Review, the Weekly Standard, now says Trump's our guy. Trump's going to be the agent of change that legitimates are somewhat fringe, marginal ideas. On the alt-right, which has been a key part of Trump's base, they're trying to construct what looks like an academically and intellectually respectable set of arguments about race, demography, national destiny, the character of citizenship, etc. But this is a very old story where uh, fringe players in politics uh, have this tendency of encouraging chaos because in chaos that creates space and in space is where they can sort of rat like squeeze in between the cracks what they're really trying to do is to mainstream a set of hatred and racial animosity that has never been seen in this country since jim crow or before these are guys that don't want to go back to the 1950s they want to go back to the 1850s they have glommed on to donald trump in a big way a lot of people around donald trump have started to internalize and believe this. And this is why the virus of the alt-right is a very deadly one for conservatism and for Republicans in this country. By August, amid rumors that Trump is dissatisfied with his performance, campaign manager Paul Manafort steps down, replaced by both Kellyanne Conway, a previous Trump critic and Republican pollster, and new campaign CEO Steve Bannon of Breitbart News. The partnership between the website and the candidate now essentially in the open. On leave from his job as executive chairman of Breitbart News, a website Bannon has called a platform for something called the alt-right. Then there's the other side, Bannon's appeal to the alt-right. Clearly Trump feels comfortable with Bannon whispering in his ear, and Bannon at his heart is is a uh, a populist, nationalist, aggressive fighter. Volatile, angry, driven aggressive. I mean, Steve Bannon is, is the type of fellow who will, who will step on anyone and over anybody to get to the top. As August rolls on, opposition research on Trump begins to emerge. Story by emerging story, the character of Donald Trump comes into full view for the American people and the political organization that nominated him. His charitable giving is at best undocumented, at worst a lie. Donald Trump's campaign has repeatedly emphasized his generosity. He has, quote, given millions of dollars away. The Washington Post did a really good investigation into Trump's claimed donations and his actually provable donations. Is this essentially saying that Trump did not personally make charitable donations? That's right. Trump obviously has a charitable foundation, but he hasn't given that foundation any of his own money since 2008. Between 2008 and this May, only one charity had actually received any money from Trump himself. They won't tell you where his charitable money flows to. Very contrary to the claims that Donald Trump has made. His charitable organization, the Trump Foundation, appears to have not only filed incorrectly in the state of New York to accept donations, but may have misused funds in ways that benefited him and his family. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman now investigating the candidate's charitable group, the Trump Foundation. The Trump Foundation used $20,000 in funds to buy a six-foot-tall painting 
of Trump. Trump used more than a quarter million dollars in donations to settle personal business lawsuits. There is proof he donated a lot of money to charities for questionable reasons, and a lot of that money wasn't out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't necessarily disclose to the person on the receiving end that this is actually a donation from one of his friends as opposed to from him, from his family foundation. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi personally solicited a political contribution from Donald Trump around the same time her office deliberated joining an investigation of alleged fraud at Trump University and its affiliates. The Donald J. Trump Foundation, a registered nonprofit, ended up giving $25,000 to Bondi's political committee while Bondi was pursuing a re-election bid in 2013. Soon after, Bondi announced she would not pursue the case against Trump University. The lawsuit over the defunct Trump University reveals an organization that worked to con students out of their money while providing none of what was promised. We were bringing in the money. A lot of it. A lot of money. Were you... You said you were the top guy. Were you the top guy? I don't know if I was. I just know I was, I'm really good at what I do. So you're a former Trump University student. Do you believe that it, it was a fraud, as the Attorney General has said? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. He says the school was a fraud. So was his teacher. He is part of a lawsuit trying to get back his $34,000. The mentors singled out the people that they saw from the financial statements had available credit lines really pressured people into calling their credit card companies to up their credit limits so that they could pay for these seminars. Well, what do you know about real estate? Again, I'm not prepared to answer those questions today. Slapped with a $40 million lawsuit by New York State's Attorney General. Accusing him of defrauding students at his Trump University. I mean, this is a straight up fraud. It's like selling people uh, something you say is a Mercedes and it turns out to be a Volkswagen. He said, my hand-picked experts will teach you my personal secrets. He and the president of the university have already testified under oath. He never met the instructors. They weren't hand-picked. They weren't experts. Some of them came out of fast food and retail. He duped them in. Thousands of people paid millions of dollars. Depositions from past lawsuits show a man who blatantly and forcefully lies repeatedly with no expectation of consequence. His own ghostwriter for his book, The Art of the Deal, Tony Schwartz, calls him a sociopath. So there is no, there is no heart, there is no soul. If you Google the word sociopath, you'll get the first list will be the 10 key qualities of a sociopath. That is a perfect description of Donald Trump. So I am here because Donald Trump has successfully muzzled now for 20, 25 years, all of those people who know who he actually is. The judge set to preside over the case is attacked by Trump as having a conflict of interest because he is Mexican and Trump plans to build a wall at the border. If you invoke his race as a reason why he can't do his job. I think that's why he's doing it. But I think that's, that's why he's doing it. If you are saying he can't do his job because of his race, is that not the definition of racism? No, I don't think so at all. His name is... Gonzalo Curiel. This judge is of Mexican heritage. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. You're invoking his race when talking about whether I'm or not saying. he can do his job. Jack, I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. He's Mexican, an American. Uh, he's of Mexican heritage, and he's very proud of it. A tape is released of conversations on a hot mic with then Access Hollywood reporter Billy Bush. On that tape was Trump himself saying that he likes to grab women by the genitals and kiss them against their will. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. One by one, women step forward and accuse Trump of sexual misconduct. Then we saw 10 women come forward after he denied actually doing it. He grabbed each of us tightly in a hug and kissed each one of us without asking permission. And she's a porn star. Well, I'm sure she's never been grabbed before. I am here today to add my voice to that of the other Trump accusers. Allegations of sexual misconduct against Donald Trump. In 2005, Donald Trump pushed her against a wall and, quote, forced his tongue down my throat. He did it to me. He did it to me. We saw reporters. We saw right. people who had worked with him, people from Apprentice and so on and so forth. Mr. Trump using his speech at Gettysburg this weekend to issue a threat to the women. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. Critics 
concerned about Trump's inexperience in regards to foreign policy, raised concerns over his apparent admiration for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. I don't know Putin. He said nice things about me. If we got along well, that would be good. Do you have a relationship with Vladimir Putin, a conversational relationship? I do have a relationship, and I can tell you that he's very interested in what we're doing here today. Uh, I could see him being rolled by Vladimir Putin, who knows how to play him. Putin reaffirming their bromance by calling the GOP frontrunner, quote, brilliant and talented. I think in terms of leadership, he's getting an A. He's certainly a respected leader. He's respected in his country. I think Putin's been a very strong leader for Russia. The truth is that he is uh, strong and he's tough. The one thing we know about people like Putin is that they are brilliant at exploiting chaos and confusion. Four years of Donald Trump as president would be nothing but a raging garbage fire of chaos and confusion. News emerges that Trump is willing to embrace protocols related to the use of nuclear weapons that send dangerous signals to other nuclear powers. So North Korea has nukes. Japan has a problem with that. I mean, they have a big problem with it. Maybe they would, in fact, be better off if they defend themselves from North Korea. Maybe with we nukes. would be better off. Including with nukes, yes, including with nukes. And the potential for instability in virtually every region of the world right now is just tremendous. And once you introduce nuclear weapons into that equation, I mean, you're talking World War I with thousands of times the destructive capacity. So you have no problem with Japan, Times. South Korea David having nuclear weapons? Uh, at some point, we have to say, you know what? We're better off if Japan protects itself against this maniac in North Korea. We're better off, frankly, if South Korea is going to start to protect itself. Saudi Arabia we have nuclear weapons? Saudi Arabia, absolutely. Them Can too. I be honest with you? It's going to happen anyway. It's going to happen anyway. It's, it's only a question of time. When Trump says things like, well, Saudi Arabia or South Korea or Japan, you know, they need to get their, their own nuclear weapons because it's not the United States' role to provide that nuclear security deterrence umbrella. Um, he is proposing to accelerate uh, potentially apocalyptic consequences. So you would, you would rule in the possibility of using right, nuclear weapons against ISIS? Well, I'm never going to rule anything out. I have been trying to think how we could conceivably use a nuclear weapon in the Middle East or in Europe in fighting ISIS. Where can you, cons and why put it on the table? I think, well, it someday, maybe. You know, with tensions flaring between Russia and the Baltics, between China, Japan, and Taiwan, obviously North Korea and South Korea, it's not looking like it's going to wind down anytime soon. Uh, a foreign policy expert on the international level went to advise Donald Trump and three times he asked about the use of nuclear weapons. And when you're the head of a global superpower, inconsistency, unpredictability, those, those are dangerous things. They, they, they frighten your friends and they tempt your enemies. Three times he asked at one point, if we have them, why can't we use them? Uh, you know, 70 years of U.S. nuclear deterrence policy has been premised on the fact that we do not use nuclear weapons. And once you, once you initiate that as a possibility, um, there are a lot of itchy trigger fingers around the world. John Noonan, who used to be at the switches to launch a nuclear weapon, went on a remarkable tweet storm writing in part, buckle the hell up, and nuclear deterrence is about balance. Trump is an elephant jumping up and down on one side of the scale. Three times in an hour briefing, why can't we use nuclear weapons? Quietly doing a job that is really the gravest of responsibility that you can ask uh, of a young military member. And to see Donald Trump uh, play so loose and so fast and so callously with such an important important responsibility, it's hard to watch. Yes, I'm concerned. Yes, every American who's contemplating pulling a lever for this guy in November should be concerned. And it's an absolutely terrifying thought. But through it all, his supporters remain steadfast. They deny or rationalize every offense. Better health care, and we know that Trump will do that. We know Trump will raise America up. We saw when Donald Trump early in the primaries came out for single-payer health care, all of a sudden, a large number of Republicans, according to polls, came out in favor of single-payer health care too. We spent 10 years fighting eminent domain abuse. Donald Trump gives one interview saying the eminent domain is wonderful, and all of a sudden, large numbers of Republicans agree with him. And large, really large and dismaying numbers of conservative leaders agree with him. He's not real phony. He's a real. leader. He's a businessman. 
Because he's a businessman. We uh, need more business people to get us out of debt. He's a great businessman, very savvy, very smart. He's taking a, a downgrade in pay for That's this right. job. And I would just like to see a businessman in the office that understands business. He's a great business guy and he's a billionaire and he makes money. He says what Make America says money. money. He's always been fair to every employee and people that work for him. He's not a politician. He has his own money. He can't be bought and sold. He may say a lot of crazy things, but they're true, they're tough. And he, and he wants America to be great, like a lot of us do. Yeah. He's not a politician. He's going to make America great again. Not a politician. That's good. The people that, are, that get out and work to make a living, we need somebody backing us like him. He tells it like it is. What started as a populist movement in 2008 as a way to combat an overreaching and overspending government transformed from motivated to outraged to allegiant. He's our only hope. Our only hope. I hope and pray that Trump gets to be our next president. And he always gets the job done, believe me. He's the only president that can get our country out of debt and put us into a place where we are strong again. He's real. He's not corrupt. He's real. He's not politically correct. Yes, go Trump. He's saying what we're thinking. He's going to fight for us. He's a fighter. I love his tenacity. Because he's honest and he gets right to the point. He doesn't mess around. He doesn't lie. Trump is going to turn this world around and make us great again. He doesn't lie. He is the greatest. He's the best thing that this country needs because we haven't had that in a long time. Somebody who will back us. We just love it. Be safe. Have jobs. Vote Trump. I believe in him. I believe in his words and his actions. God bless Trump and his campaign. You know, I think for Trump, it's it's really hard for me to get away from the fact that he is wrong on the issues. Um, and at the end of the day, as president, he would be governing and he would be dealing with those issues. All of a sudden, you have this guy come into office who has contempt for ideas and arguments that conservatives have been working on for generations and instead just wants to build crap and put his name on it and sees cutting deals, as he's written and said many times, as the essence of what he is good at. And you'll have at least half of the Republican Party go along with him no matter what he does. And then what do we have? The, 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 the single argument that, that, that a person of good moral faith can make in this campaign is, but Hillary. And while that argument is sufficient in some ways for some people, uh, the, 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 the train wreck that has hit conservatism now is going, to, is going to play out in a way that I think fractures the Republican Party. You know, there may be state officials where the Republicans still survive for some time. I think as a national party, Trump has really poisoned the credibility. He's, he's wrecked the ideological uh, pathway that the Republicans had to expanding in the future. The, the demographic bomb he planted inside the GOP is one that, that is going to require most likely a new party to pick up the flag. You'll have this guy break the back of the conservative movement. Just break it. In 2008, Republicans, believing the party had abandoned its principles and embraced government largesse, joined forces to try and implement change. The brand of Republican as the vehicle for conservatism was in stark opposition to reality. Those who stood up back then did so because they wanted change. When that change didn't happen, fear became anger and change became destruction. Throughout history, movements have begun with earnest intent and ended in fire and war. It is never at the moment it turns that people accept the path they are on. It is always after it's too late to turn back. It is not too late to turn back. Yeah.
Ooh.